Yes. Welcome to Up In Your Business with Kerry McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners first-hand insight in starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk-taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. Hello, you're listening to KABF in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get all up in your business. For the next hour, I will be taking calls, answering questions, and trying our best to give good advice to small business owners and to people who want to own a small business. You may be asking yourself, what makes this lady qualified to do this? And I'll tell you, experience. So in a minute, you can email or call and ask me anything. My experience is deep and wide, and my advice is free. Unbelievable. Forty years ago, with just $400, I started Arkansas Flag and Banner. Since then, it's morphed into flagandbanner.com with sales nearing $4 million. That's worth saying again. I started Arkansas Flag and Banner with just $400, and today we have sales almost $4 million. I started by selling flags door-to-door, then went to telemarketing, next mail order, and catalog sales, and today we rely heavily on the Internet. In addition, over the last 40 years, I've navigated Flag and Banner through two recessions and two wars. When people find out I'm that woman who owns Arkansas Flag and Banner, they often say, Oh, I've heard about you, and begin asking me business advice. I amaze even myself with all the knowledge I've gained. If you call me for advice, you will not be given textbook answers or theory. But you will be given candid advice from my real-world experience. So be prepared to hear the truth. It's not always easy to hear. For instance, you may not want to hear this. In business, there are very few overnight successes. Starting and owning a business takes persistence, perseverance, and patience. When I started Arkansas Flag and Banner, I supplemented my income by waitressing, all while I peddled my flags door-to-door. After nine years, did you hear me? Nine years of working a part-time job, the company began to grow and solely support me. My first hire was a bookkeeper to handle the clerical side of my business. My first expansion was to begin the manufacturing of custom flags, so a sewing department developed. The next decade ushered in the Desert Storm War. Flags were scarce, so a screen printing department was hurriedly built to meet consumer demands. In addition to sales and manufacturing, Flag and Banner now has a purchasing department, a shipping department, technology department, marketing department, call center, and retail store. And I spearheaded the development of every one of these departments. My experience is deep and wide, and my advice is free. Unbelievable. Before we start taking calls or emails, I want to introduce you to the people at the table. We have Tim Bowen, our technician, who will be taking your calls and pushing the button. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. <laughs> he does that every time. I love it. And my guest today is Matt McLeod, a highly successful painter, sculptor, and muralist, specializing in fine art for residential, commercial, and public art spaces. After graduating from Southern Methodist University in Dallas in 1987, Matt spent 15 years in a career in advertising before becoming a full-time artist. I know that was scary. We'll talk about that. In 2015, just one year ago, he opened his very own McLeod Fine Arts Gallery in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. Welcome to the table, accomplished artist and entrepreneur, Matt McLeod. Thanks, Carrie. You're welcome. Matt, you say about yourself, and I quote, I paint energetic color. What does that mean? (laughs) Well, how much time do we have in the program? to One hour. Okay. Well, I think that every artist is always trying to, at some point in their career, find out really what they're trying to get at with their work. Artwork is a communication with the viewer. And every artist that matures begins to realize that they're trying to say something and they're trying to get at something. And I think in my evolution, what I've been exploring is that I believe that we're all made up of energy. And, you know, I don't know whether that's our spirit or 
what it is about us as people that are living and walking the earth. But at some point, we all very much are interested in connecting with each other. And the great thing about art form is it's an ongoing process of connection. And so the more I examined that, and the more I sort of tried to boil down the essence of humanity, the more I sort of got in touch with the fact that we're really human beings that have and contain a sense of energy. And so what I'm doing with my paintings is trying to explore that all the time. And I'm trying to essentially look at things that I see around me. Often they're rather mundane things. But if I can take a mundane thing, explore what I believe is the essence of life, and make that subject sublime by communicating the energy that I feel that we all share, then I've really done something. And I'm able to connect with the viewer in that way. So I may have made a big circle on that, but essentially what I'm doing when I try to show energetic color is I use the tools that I have, which are paints, colors, shape making, and to try to communicate the energy that I feel that we all share. So that's, in a sense, energetic That was color. absolutely beautiful. <laughs> well. <laughs> it was. We are okay. all trying to connect with each other. Well, I think so. And art is so subjective. Hmm. And addictive. Mm-hmm. Good. Once you, yeah, good. There's the entrepreneur <laughs> in it. Yeah, that's good for me. Uh, but once you buy one piece of art, whether it's expensive or not expensive, mm-hmm. you put it in your room and you live with it a little bit, and you become addicted to more art. Well, I believe that to be true, Carrie. And and really, you know, the people who live with fine art, you know, unique works of art, know that to be true. And, and the best art is work that you will come back to. Um, that you will want to live with and that makes that speaks to you and you know you can't really put a price you said you know I don't know if we said expensive or not but you know you can't put a price tag on something that makes you feel really wonderful every time you you connect with it it's something that really gets at your core and there are some pictures or rather art that I have on the wall that I never get tired of looking at right that's the the beauty of living with art oh it's nice and when people really start to get in touch with that they just become collectors and yeah, they just, really shouldn't because it's very addictive. I mean, it really is. I love that. <laughs> no, they should because I, it's addictive. I, I came to your art show last night. Mm-hmm. Very nice. First time I've ever been there. And you had one at the end of the hall mm-hmm. of uh, look like a teenager laying mm-hmm. on the couch. And mm-hmm. man. It spoke to you, didn't it? It did. Yeah. I was like, I can't. I woke up and thought about it again this morning, and I thought, mm, 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 mm. well, you so, need to come back in and take know, another visit. Right? <laughs> so, when Jeez. did you first know that you had this gift, or have you? All, has it just always been there? Mm, well, you know, I don't always look at it as gift, but I appreciate you saying that because that means that you see it as such. You know, for me, it's. I think artists know that they have to do it. I think there's a little bit of talent. I tell people that, you know, when I teach students, I I say you have to have a little bit of talent and then you have to have a whole lot of work. And, you know, if you put 10% talent and a 90% work ethic and you work at it really hard every day, you're going to get really good at it. And, you know, I think that's... So it's just practice? Well, there's a part of being able... First of all, you're not going to practice unless you love it. And so there's a response that you're going to have as a visual art form. For me, it's, it's looking at something and recreating it and recreating it in a really interesting way. And I really get a kick out of the viewer that sees something that I've done. Because essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm looking at something, I take it apart and then reassemble it using my own ability, creative creativity and energy to make something that I hope is even more. And so I love that part. But you have to be in love with it to practice it. So my best answer to you is that it takes a real desire to do it because you kind of really get a kick out of it. But then you have to pile a bunch of hard work around that. Well, that takes me to my next question. But before we do, I want to tell our listeners that you're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy on KABF. And my guest today is the renowned artist Matt McLeod from McLeod's Fine Arts Gallery in downtown Little Rock. If you've got questions or comments for either of us, call. Tim, what's the number? 501-433-0088. And we have a new thing because we had listeners request that we have a way to email us questions for people who don't want to call in. You can also email your questions to questions, that's with an S, at upyourbusiness.org. So you can call what number again? 501-433-0088. Or email questions at upyourbusiness.org. 
So, Matt, your last thing talking about talent versus practice, Mm -hmm. you are very educated. I read in your bio, I've known you for 30-something years, and you sent me your bio after I nagged you a little bit. (laughs) And I was kind of shocked to see how in-depth your bio was for a creative guy. You did a really good job Mm. of laying it all out for me. And your accomplishments, you went to Southern Methodist University Mm -hmm. in Dallas, did right. you study art? No, I didn't. Actually, when I went to school at 83 to 87, I didn't know anybody in Little Rock that was making a living as an artist. And I really went there. Not, I was one of those kids that just didn't know what he wanted to do. You know, I, I thought I would try to get just a general liberal arts education, maybe get a degree in business. And SMU's got those things. And so I went there to originally study business and decided that I kind of fell in love with the communications um, college there. And got a degree in advertising and thought that I would, in the advertising business, I'd be able to combine both business and creativity. And you can. And so that's what, you know, that's what I ended up getting a degree in. And I really did not study studio art at at SMU. Well, I want to come back to your next career, but we've got a caller. Hey, caller, you're on the air. Hey, this is Shane Gray. I was just listening. I don't know McLeod, I don't think, but what he had to say about art, I think it was really great. I think, it, you know, an artist could be musician, writer, painter, and uh, I really like what he said. Well, thanks, Shane. It's a good show. I've been listening in, and uh, I think I heard Tim that works at, at Flag and Banner with you. He does? Yeah, I heard his voice. We're friends. Hi, but, Shane. But uh, I just want to let you know I'm listening in, and I'm definitely going to look up. You said it's Matt McLeod? You can look us up at mattmcleod.com, and McLeod is M-C-L-E-O-D.com. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Take a look and let me know what you think. Definitely, man. Thanks. Hey, thanks for calling. Have a good day. So, Matt, you worked after you got out of school, you went into communications. When you got out, you worked in advertising. I did. You know, at at that time, I was thinking I just needed to get a degree that was practical, something that I could use uh, to make a living. And like I said, I didn't know any artists then that were making any sort of a living. And I wasn't really that involved in the arts community when I, you know, when I was graduating from high school. But but I thought that the advertising degree might be a good... um, degree practical and I I started working for various uh, advertising firms I started off in Dallas working for a huge huge agency Uh, I was working as a an assistant media planner on the Pepsi Cola business he was the who was the huge agency at that time it was Tracy Locke uh, I know that yeah yeah. they were bought and or acquired and uh, merged I think and now that at some point they became DDB Needham worldwide and they've probably been bought again but you know it's just Mm -hmm big advertising world but I was a little bitty tiny fish in a giant pool and, and it was fun and then um, I came back here and uh, I've, I've know uh, Wayne Cranford and and had a meeting with him one time he he offered me a position at uh, at that time it's Cranford Johnson Robinson and uh, I got in the, the media department there and you know I don't know if you want me to go through all of my advertising <laughs> career but, oh you've had a bunch well you know in the advertising world sometimes you have to switch jobs to make a pay increase and so I, oh. I moved around quite a bit um, oh. and I was trying to find where I really fit and what really was the right thing for me to do and you know, I love the people in the advertising world. They're fun, they funny, are. vibrant people. They really God, are. And they're creative. Yeah. Uh, but, and it's a tough, tough business, though. Yes, it oh, is. So competitive. I would never, I know. <clears throat> so, you know, it, did, it wasn't the best fit for me. But I, I met some really great people and some people that are still really involved in my life and have encouraged me to do certain things, including to, to become an artist. And so that was a great experience. I want to have Tom and Toma, the Martin Toma and his wife on. Uh, uh, Martin and Melissa Toma. Mm-hmm. They were my last employers. Oh, they were? They were. And wonderful people. Wonderful people really and are. friends of mine. So I'm going to reach out to them to come in. I think we're booked almost all the way till 2017 oh wow good for you I, I know. but they'd be great to interview really oh, super people husband and wife team we uh-huh. can talk about nepotism and everything so you had to decide to quit working and getting a regular paycheck mm-hmm. and to decide <laughs> <laughs> look he's smiling and to decide to take that leap of faith mm-hmm. was there something that triggered that yes and you know it was pretty profound in my life um and, and, and you, you talk about leap of faith, and, uh, and that's really what it was. Um, okay, so if I take you back about 15, 16 years ago, I was working for Martin and Melissa Toma. They were my last employer. We went through 9-11 uh, oh. together, and they had a small firm at that time. 
I was uh, trying to find out what I wanted to do. I was really studying a hobby of painting uh, at that time. And, you know, they were tremendously supportive people and very much about living your dream and finding out what you're really good at and utilizing your talents. And that discussion, that sort of environment made me think about what am I doing and what am I really want to be doing? I guess you sort of hit a point in your, I sort of think of midlife at some point, you know, mid thirties, early forties, something like that. And you go, what am I doing? What do I really want to be doing? And I knew I was in love with my hobby. And I had a lunch with a guy one time and he said, you know, what are you, what are you really passionate about? And he goes, I go, well, I'm passionate about your, being your account executive. And he goes, okay, well, let's set that aside for a second. <laughs> uh, you know, you're, bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, he smelled it out, and he said, hey, uh, you know, you're you're a good account executive, but I get the feeling you're really passionate about something else. Don't think about the question. Just tell me right off, what would you really love to be doing right now? And I said, you know, I'd love to be a painter. I'd love to be an artist. I just don't think I can make a living doing it. He said, well, you know, whether you make a living doing it or not, I think you need to give it a shot. You got one life, and, you know, I think you ought to give it a try. And it was that was profound for me. You know, that was a... I'm See not on your to, Christmas card list, list well, every no, year? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I lost touch with him, and I need to find out who that what? is, who that was. But, you know, because it was actually profound, and I didn't know it at the time. But I did think it was a, you know, a God moment. I thought it was, I'm, mm-hmm. not, I'm not here to preach any religion. You did go it, to but, Southern Methodist University. Well, <laughs> I did. And, you know, I have my own faith, and I thought that was one of those moments that just didn't come out of... Um, coincidence you know that was right. meaningful yeah you have those moments don't you i do we all do so and, you had, and so that was a moment yeah. and then post 9 11 is what, I, what i'm really trying to get at oh okay and and the economy was terrible i don't yeah. know if you remember that anymore. oh yeah dude the i was selling changed. flags like crazy right. it wasn't terrible well, for me good business for you no no sorry but it may have been one of the true. only well and i hate to look at it that way but that was the only business probably that i knew of that was you know probably. doing anything most of the people that we were talking to and trying to um either find accounts or servicer accounts were not spending right. everybody was freezing their spending and we lost one account because they just reviewed it every three years and the other account was acquired and then the rest of our accounts that we had on staff weren't spending so one morning i have this conversation with martin toma he sits down with me and another person says you know i just haven't been making i haven't been drawing a salary for my own business in the last two months and i just we have we're going through a tough time and we're gonna have to cut back we're going to be part, in, and so I'm going to have to lay you off. And the first reaction when you, somebody tells you they're going to lay you off is like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? This is terrible. This is horrible. But I took it another way. I went, you know, Martin, this is a good thing, and I think this is a God moment for me. I mm-hmm. think I'm supposed to go be an artist. And he said, Matt, you'd be a great artist. <laughs> he said, I want to support you. I want you to leave today, and you can go be an artist. And we're going to help you with a, a severance payment to help you do that. And wow. so he's really, they are really wonderful people over there. You know, I almost feel sorry for people who have a really great job and a really great income and a really, everything's really cushy and good, but they are not fulfilled. Yeah, I do too. Because they don't get pushed out into the world to go and find out what their path is and what their passion is and where they should be because it's too soft where they are. Well, I couldn't agree more, Carrie. And, the, you know, the scary thing about it was I had a, a house payment, two car payments, you know, a child, you know, just all the reasons that you have to, you know, be try to be secure. I, w- I wish all of the people I let go would be that nice when I let them go. And they go, oh, this is really nice. Thank you. But, you know, you said leap of faith, and that's really what it was. And I just thought that these were two very significant signs that I needed to go give it hell and they try. absolutely you know, were. And mm-hmm. either just fall on my face or die trying. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know that I, I don't know that I had your guts to go sell things door to door. But I, I took that moment and just ran. And I just worked every well, your first as hard show, as I could. I went to your first show. I didn't realize that was your first show. I kind of thought it was when I was there that night. It was in 2006. Right. It was at Local Color mm-hmm. Gallery up on Kavanaugh. Mm-hmm. And I think when I was reading that, I thought, you know, I kind of remember that being your first show. Mm-hmm. That has got to be, talk about bearing your soul, mm-hmm. ready to show your work and for people to judge it and to judge you. Mm-hmm. How hard was that? Well, it was really hard. It was scary as hell. I wouldn't kid you to tell that it was anything else. Um, it's just, just absolutely scary. You know, it's like it's like you're holding up your children and you're just hoping that nobody says they hate your baby's ugly, you know. Yeah, you're exposing yourself you to really all are. that criticism. Well, you are. And um, you just have to, you know, you said leap of faith. That's part of it. And part of it is you just have to thicken your skin. And, yeah, this is, you know, this is the way it's going to be. I have to put myself out there. 
and putting myself out there means that I open myself up for criticism and, and that's just it. At some point you have to say to yourself, okay, look, not everybody's going to love me and they don't. And so you have to focus your attention on the people who do love you. And That's there's right. and, and, and you can start with your family. I think one of the best things to do is to sort of start uh, accounting the people who really love you and care about you. And, you know, I started with my family, my friends, and just anybody that I thought would come and support me in that way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you put it out there in the public. And if people don't like you, you know, most of the time what i found is people keep it to themselves and they just don't come. But people who do love you and, and really want to support you will come over and over and over again. And that's, that's the real blessing of it. Well, so. you've done very well. Let's break here to tell our listeners again that you're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy on KABF. My guest today is the renowned artist Matt McLeod from McLeod's Fine Arts Gallery in downtown Little Rock on Main Street. If you've got questions or comments for either of us, call 501-433-0088. Oh, he's pointing to it on the wall. There you go. (laughs) Or send an email to questions at upyourbusiness.org. So not everybody becomes an artist. Mm -hmm. Well, look, we've already got a phone call. Let's take that before I ask the next question. You're on the air. Thanks for taking my call, Kerry. You're welcome. I've listened to you, I think, ever since uh, your program debuted. Is this Bob? How'd you know that? I could tell. You had the best four-legged stool comment. You like that? <laughs> yes. We still talk about it. <laughs> well, you know, the good thing about having a name like Bob is you can spell it backwards and it still works for you. <laughs> yes. But I love, what you, I, I love what you and your guests are doing because you're, you're stepping out of the shadows. And pardon the phrase, you two have made it. And, and you're telling people, you know, basically, I'm hearing a common thread here. Yeah. Stepping out on faith. Uh, I believe Tim made the comment about 10% ability and 90% work ethic or something along those lines. Yeah. You know, and I love stories like that that are uh, rags and riches. That's not necessarily, you know, accurate because that's kind of cliche. But stepping out from, let's put let's put it this way, a comfort zone possibly. Sure. There you go. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a brief story about okay. my own career. And I've been in this business career for 25 years, but it's funny sometimes when a stranger tells you something that hits you right between the eyes, and maybe your mom and daddy have been talking to you for years, or your wife, or whatever, and you just didn't quite get it. But I was on a plane going to uh, see some in-laws in uh, Christmas time, around, oh, 1991, somewhere in that range right there. And it turns out the fellow we were, it, it was southwest, so I got three across seating. Well, the third fellow that was sitting there was from, was from Russellville. And he was an engineer and worked for Nuclear One. Well, at the time, I was late 20s and toiling in an unnamed factory job, which was the epitome of a dead end. Right. Let me tell you. Yeah, I bet. I never forget what I told him. Because, and so this guy, I looked at this guy. This guy was successful. I mean, he had a college degree. He was an engineer. He had a good gig, et cetera, et cetera. He had everything that I thought I was aspiring for and wanted. And okay. I just met him five minutes ago. What? But I'll never forget what I told him. I never, okay. forget, what, I never forget what he told me on the plane. He looked at me, and he said, Bob, I hate to tell you this, brother, but uh, as long as you're working in that factory, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life. And your parents and wife had told you that already? Well, in half, so many words. Half my parents. Well, Dad split when I was about three. I guess he didn't like my haircut. I'm not sure which, but anyway. <laughs> I'm sure it was your fault. <laughs> you're right. It was. But anyway. That hit me right between the eyes. Sometimes it takes a stranger, doesn't it? was like a slap in the face. It was like God put us out on my shoulder. I was like, hey, brother, wake up. You know, you're underemployed. So how long did it take you to turn in your papers? Uh, Don't tell me two years. Here's the crazy part of it. I went back to school at a technical college, technical school, which is long since gone. And I got an associate degree. And and here's, here's the craziest part of all. I never even worked in the field I got the associate's degree for. Ever. Oh, well, that happens all the time. But here's the thing. Let me tell you what it is. I mean, I, and I had, a, I had a student loan. I had a student loan to repay. And I remember at one point, I contacted the student loan people about payment reduction or, you know, change the payment, whatever the case may be, was, okay? I'll never forget what the, the, the lady on the other end of the phone asked me. She said, well, how do you like working in this field? I said, I've, n- I've never have gotten a job in it. I never silenced on the other line. And she said, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, don't be. I said, that's not the point. She said, what do you mean that's not the point? 
And I said, let me tell you, when I was working 50 hours a week in a factory and going to school full-time at night, it showed me I could do something I didn't think I could do. Well, there you go. And it took my confidence, you know, you never, sky high. You never know who's going to give you that vote of confidence. Well, Bob, you've got to call in every week and give us some words of wisdom. Well, I appreciate it. But there's one thing I think, Carrie. I looked at your website. It's, it's a great one, by the way. Thank pa- you. It, pa- you know, you have to put some patriotic music on there. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but i got to ask you. I looked at your picture, and you started this 40 years ago? Yes. Were you like five years old? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you've got to call back next week. Carrie, was that a pass on air? Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Right, bye. So, Matt, not everyone starts a business about their passion. Right. Talk about opening your gallery and the fears you had to face. I know when you start painting, you probably didn't think I'm going to open a gallery one day because nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Speaking to you and Bob about what y'all are saying about you never know where life's going to lead you. Mm-hmm. You have, have to just do these leaps of faith. You probably didn't ever think, oh, I'm going to start being an artist and then I'm going to open a gallery. No. So I know when you decided to open a gallery, I want to hear why and how you opened it because I know there had to be more sleepless nights. Oh, sure. And there still are. Well, you know, you talked about um, living your passion and once I became an artist, that's really what it was all about. And, and But at some point, you know, I think what we've all been talking about starting off with um, at very modest means and trying to drive your business, at some point you realize, I can only make so much money um, doing this. And, you know, it isn't all about money, but at some point, you know, we've been talking about responsibilities and obligations, you know, car payments and electric bills and mortgages and sending kids to college you know we less stress the nicer you right, are right you know and, and but those are very real and i just thought well you know i really like working with other artists you know part of my background in the advertising business taught me the business side of things and i really learned how to uh, be a business person within somebody else's business in that experience, but I understood client relationships. I understood working with the team. I understood working and delivering on deadlines. And I began to see that those experiences led themselves to something that was more than just being simply an artist. And I thought, well, you know, I'd like to combine those two things, both you know, my business skills and my creative skills. And I saw an opportunity to open a gallery. And How did you see an opportunity to open a gallery? Well, I... Like someone just called and said, hey, you want to open a gallery here? No. Um, let me, I'll tell you. I began working with another artist to try to do some public art projects. So I became uh, interested in, in working large. I've always enjoyed painting uh, large canvases. And I began to, to want to be a muralist and, and work on some public projects. And I actually got a meeting with Mayor Stodola about some ideas that I had. And at the time, he was lo- he's always looking for ways to improve our city, and, and, um, and you know, they can't fund art projects, and that's the really hardest part you know, sure. for the city. They just can't do it. But they, they need to call the Tourist and Visitor Information Center. They got all kinds of money down there. Well, I'm, <laughs> don't tell everybody. I'm working with it right now. <laughs> just a but, tip. But, no, I appreciate that. But, but you're right. It, you know, but they're very interested in seeing uh, creative things happen in, in our city and make the city better. A lot of times they have to go find other uh, funding sources. But, but it's, that's an interesting thing. That's something I learned. But in that process, he said, you know, you ought to go talk to this guy who's bought these buildings over on Main Street because they're looking to create a creative corridor in that area, and we'd love to see some visual arts in that area. And I did. Oh. And I met with a guy named Scott Reed. And I don't know if you know Scott or not. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's been kicked around a little bit. You know, he's from Portland, and he bought the buildings over on the 500 block of uh, Main Street. And he's a, actually a decent guy. But, you know, oh, is that the Jet Art Porter? Did he buy the Art Porter building where Art he Porter? Did. That's oh, right. That, right. Okay. That's right. Mm-hmm. And um, they ran out of money on you know, different parts of those projects. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's not really what I'm getting at. Right. But, you know, one of the things that, that I was a part of that whole conversation, and, and quite honestly, before I get away from that whole topic, I think he's a decent guy. And, oh, yeah. and the people who are trying to build and he's had difficulties with are really great people. It's just, you know, one of those deals where money and finishing the project just didn't didn't work out we've all had those dead end streets and, and that everybody just, and that has. happens in real estate it, development it and, and so i don't want to say a bad thing about anybody that's part of any of that no but you know part of we that won't con- let you well good well so part of that conversation was that they really i could see that the city and the developers and people who were wanting to really kind of bring main street back uh and revitalize it 
I wanted to see real creative elements down there. And I thought, well, wow, you know, I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Because not only I can be an artist, um, I can be part of revitalization of Main Street. And this is my Main Street, you know. And so I really, that really resonated with me. So I began just showing up at meetings. And I began to contribute. And you landed the mural on 6th and Main Street. I did. And it was part of that same, you know. Does it have a name? uh, Beneath the Surface. Oh. Beneath the Surface. I love it. Thank you. And then you end up looking at it every day because your gallery is right uh, across the it's street. It's kind of fun. Well, you know, I, I, I like looking at it because it's 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 public art, and I love public art. Um, but you know, I love graffiti. I know that's weird. <laughs> I do. Just as long as it's not graffiti over my mural, that's okay. With yeah, me. right. Yeah, that's not. But good. I, but but I think there'd be you know some cool things we could do with some um, street artists, you know, graffiti artists. That, that if we find a place that really makes sense to do it and do it really well, you know, that could be really fun. I've got a that's wall. That's art from the street, you know. I've and got that's a what wall. It's about well, you know, maybe that's something we'll we could organize. The thing. Yeah, absolutely. But. You know, just just showing up and having conversations with people who are trying to create something really interesting and vital and 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 uh, you know creative in in the city is how I ended up finding space in that building to open a, a gallery and was also able to do a mural across the street. So. That is neat. You got the you got the rep on one corner. You got the mural on another corner. And then you've got your gallery on one corner. What's on the fourth corner? Uh, that's really cool. Uh, well, you know, uh, Cranford Company. Oh, yeah. and you go to an uh, agency yeah, the, that's your, the, close to your heart the on Cranford the other corner. Cranford Brothers, uh, Wayne Cranford's uh-huh. sons, uh, formed their own marketing communications uh, firm on that corner. But right next to them is Ballet, Arkansas. Oh, that's and right up there with my heart. Yeah, they're moving in, um, hopefully, I saw that sign when I was weeks. down there just last night. I was wondering. Hey, man, you talk about beautiful uh, artists down, Matt, and down. athletes. Oh, man. Yeah, well, right. The ballerinas are beautiful. But, you know, they're a unique combination of, of, of athletics and, and art form. It's just really cool to see them and have that energy down there. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, the building is going to get finished uh, relatively soon. And hopefully, the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra is going to move in next to them. I don't want to speak for them. I'm not doing that. But the initial design was to have them be right next to uh, Ballet Arkansas. Well, Ballet Arkansas, the rep has got an annex theater right next to where Ballet Arkansas is. Oh, really? Yeah, you should check that out. That's really cool. They do um, real small, intimate black box. performances, black box, uh, in the round type of um, <clears throat> Oh, I love that. Plays. You know, it's 20 years ago when we used to have plays. another mayor, what was his name? Daly. Daly. I sent him a letter when I bought the Taborian Hall on 9th sure. Street, and, and I sent Jim Daly a letter and said, North Little Rock has got the art district. Can we be the theater and performance district and he loved it because we have something like seven theaters Mm -hmm. between all the way up to sixth street sure because or set or maybe it was ninth street because you could do the children's theater yeah so if you go from from second street all the way to ninth street little rock has i think seven theaters well, I think it's a great idea to create a, a performing well, arts. Well, it sounds like it's happening. Well, I'd, I'd love to see it, but I'd also like to see a visual arts uh, component of all that. Well, too. that always goes with it, too. Sure. Um, so was signing the lease scary? Oh, absolutely. How long? Did you, well, I won't ask you how long you had to sign it, <laughs> but I know you had to sign it. To me, that is was one of the scariest things about the Taborian Hall was signing the paper that said you're going to do this for so many years yeah it scares the hell out of you You know you've committed to a certain amount of money uh the other thing is a payroll trying to meet a payroll every week i mean i can't imagine what it's like for you i've got one employee but it's just did you know that your one employee used to work for me when i came to the gallery last night she hugged my neck good if anybody from arkansas flag and banners listening i want them to know that carolyn crocker is working for matt mcleod we i feel like i raised her all the way hey carolyn i feel i know she's listening i feel like i raised her all the way through college Mm. she worked for me for like seven years i was so happy to see her and she still looks like she's 12 well she um she she does look young and i'm i'm thrilled to have her with me so what do you think about yeah you should be she's an artist also she's really good Uh are you punching a clock these days do you have to be at the gallery all the time when i moved arkansas flag and banner out of my home and into a storefront Mm -hmm. it was a shock well, absolutely, and it's a shock for me. And yes, I'm there. It feels like I'm there all the time. But fortunately, I did hire Carrie. Uh, I call her Carrie, Carolyn Crocker. Oh, I know. Um, and fortunately, I did hire her, so I can occasionally get away. I went to a wedding this last weekend, and I'm going. To I the saw that on game Facebook. Tomorrow, so, yeah, go hog. So, you know, I get a day off every once in a while, but there's very few days off. You know, but you know, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like it's work all the time. And that's well, you've like only been cliche. doing it a year. I'm going to ask you that in five well, years. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Here here with my guest, 
Matt McLeod from the McLeod Fine Arts Gallery on Main Street in downtown Little Rock. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. If you've got questions for me or Matt, you can call us. Hold it, I'm fixing to read it. At 501-433-0088. Or you can... Tim's nodding. Very good, Carrie. Or you can email me questions with an S at upyourbusiness.org. So, pricing your work. Mm-hmm. Every artist I know mm-hmm. sells too cheap. <laughs> that you could tell I'm a business person. Uh-huh. I'm like, that's too cheap. Uh-huh. I know how much paint costs. Uh-huh. I know how much time that took. Right. But artists never think their time's worth anything. Well, and I know that was your problem in the beginning, and well, you've finally parsed over to the other side. Have I? <laughs> I think so, because your prices last night were right up there where they should have been. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. I still think I'm a bargain, but you know. There you go. That's the I, entrepreneurial spirit. Well, you know, I have to tell you, quite honestly, people in Little Rock are a shop for a bargain, and so that's part of it is that you have to understand what your market is, you know, willing to pay. Uh, but I think people do need to spend a little more uh, on on really quality artwork. But it really, the, the reality for uh, pricing—that's what you're asking. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, um, there has to be a pragmatic side. I would, I t- when I, if I was to tell another artist, I would say, okay, look, you know, be be ultimately pragmatic. Look at you know what your materials really cost you. Look at the time that you're going to put in on it, and what's that? You know, if you put an hourly rate on that, what would that come up to? And then look at it as. It, how you know how many paintings am I selling a year? You know, and what does that mean? The business. And side what of do it. I need to make? And how do I cover my costs? Because the thing that breaks my heart is to see artists who are really talented who can't make a living. And you were mentioning part-time work, and that's part of it too. You know, some people go back to you know wait tables or you know, and I've done all that. I've done every anything, everything. I think but. most artists don't have enough business sense. Mm-hmm. You and Pat Matthews, both of you are my friends, mm-hmm. and you both have got some business background and you understand an income statement and a balance sheet and it's not just oh i bought ten dollars worth of paint i'm going to sell it for twenty dollars there's overhead there's employees Mm -hmm. there's advertising i mean they just there's a lot that goes into it Mm -hmm. and i think too many artists don't realize all that goes into it well, I think that most artists work on, I can't remember what's left or right side of their brain. Oh, but. I looked that up because the last time you and I had this conversation, okay. you, you, neither one of us knew. So they work on the one you don't think they'd work on. They work on the right side. Right side of their brain. And that's Supposedly. the creative side. And they want to stay there. It feels good to be in that part of your brain, actually. And so, you know, a lot of artists want to stay in the right side of their brain. And, um, and actually, that's good for me because, um, you know, they allow me to use my left side of my brain to help sell their work and, and handle a lot of those business things. I noticed at your gallery you had, you had probably your art was the least amount of art last night. Well, there was only two, I think, paintings of yours. And there were several, several. There were three or four artists there who yeah. had more paintings than you. Mm. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's, that's accurate. Um, you know, that I, would, I would address it this way. that I've been really fortunate this year. I've, I've done a lot of commissions, and I haven't done a lot of what I call spec work, which is just you know, creating something and putting it on the wall. And that's a real blessing for me. But, um, you know. And is it I, hard to come up with new ideas when you are just doing, no, when you're not doing commissions? No. No, I love it. I mean, you know, I, I, but my ideas, you know, I, I'm one of those artists that doesn't sit, sit and contemplate certain emotions and stuff like that. I'm much more um, interested in finding something that I see and that maybe you've seen and, and pulling it apart and putting it back together in an interesting way. So I, I have an unlimited source of inspiration. I mean, I, if I find anything, you know, I, I'll try to look at it, recreate it, reframe it. And, and, just, and I, so I'm working on, you know, that level of visual interest and creativity. But no, I never run out of inspiration. I mean, I find stuff all the time. But a lot of times what I do is I start my work in my camera. So, you know, I'll walk around with my camera all the time finding interesting visual compositions. And I'll start composing within the rectangle of that viewfinder in, within the camera. And I'm not a great photographer, but, but I start thinking in terms of composition and light. And that's fun. That's really, really fun. You feel like you're an artist when you're walking around sort of kind of creating within your camera and thinking about ideas that you might turn into, into that's a great paintings. tip for artists so what do you have what that's a great tip thank you for artists who are wanting to get started sure. or create sure what else any do they have to go to school like you what other suggestions do you think i heard you say 10 percent, 90 percent yeah 90 percent work mm-hmm. but have you got any real advice for somebody who wants to do art and oh, get gosh. started 
So do we have another couple of hours here? <laughs> no. Just give us a couple of big pointers. Like how, if you were starting today yeah. and you were going to start all over today, today knowing mm-hmm. everything that you know, mm-hmm. would you start with your camera? Well, it's not that simple of an answer, uh, uh-huh. being because a lot of artists are very much interested in showing people and the figure. And so if you're that type of artist... What does that artist, mean, showing people the figure? Well, a lot of people, like my, my friend Kevin Cressy. Do you yeah, know oh Kevin? yeah, I've got his. Okay, mm-hmm. he's very interested in um, sculpting the figure, people. Oh, I got you. Forms. Figure, yeah, people. People, okay. forms. And... If that's your thing, you need to go with your thing. You got to take know. a lot of naked people. Well, you do, there and you that's, go. that's and not no all wonder bad. Kevin likes that. <laughs> 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 wonder how his wife feels about yeah. that. I'm gonna talk to her. Yeah, she's amazingly Bridget? supportive of all that. Actually, she laughs about it too. I know. But you know, the thing is, what I would say is, embrace what you really love and 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 just run with it and i just happen to be someone who's always looking at landscapes i like people in landscapes things in landscapes but i'm always searching in that direction because that's what drives me and so if i was to you know talk to me the starting artist you know 15 16 years ago i'd say look what is it that you really feel like you need to say or that you really respond to embrace that completely and work your butt off for it and don't and don't be afraid to supplement your income in other ways, and but just keep working at it. That's what I would say. Don't give up. Yeah, like I worked for nine years, yeah. you know, till Flag and Banner could support me. People right. often say to me, "Oh, you're creative, Carrie," and I don't have a creative bone in my body. I have no <laughs> desires to paint, to sew. Yeah, but to you draw, know, to sing. You know, people say that to me all the time too, because of the area that I'm in. But you know, I think you're probably really creative in the way you manage your business and the way you think about how you're going to build your business. And I think that most people in the business world are, are highly creative about how they want to build their business and what they want to do with their lives and how they're going to direct their business. And so I, I find that to be highly creative. I think you're right. It kind of hit me about six months to a year ago, mm-hmm. and I thought. I love business. Mm-hmm. I love building business. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of described it earlier about having an idea and then kind of putting it on paper and figuring out the mm-hmm. flow of the idea, mm-hmm. thinking about the end results, mm-hmm. and then the process of getting there. And sure. in a weird sort of way, that is creative. Well, absolutely. And I don't think you would have built a business to a $4 million sales point and not resonate with the people who see your you know, your business. And that's really what it's like is in an art form, is that you're finding something that resonates with people. And the dollars come along with that. So I think that building a business is a highly creative endeavor. Yes. Thank you for that kudos so you're listening to up in your business with carrie mccoy on kabf and my guest today is artist matt mcleod from mcleod's fine arts gallery in downtown little rock if you've got questions or comments for either of us call 501-433-0088 or send an email to questions with an s at upyourbusiness.org so matt your gallery is only a year old Mm mm-hmm what happened that you didn't think was going to happen? It, there has to be something that you're like, I didn't expect this. Like driving, to, like when I bought the Taborian Hall, mm-hmm. I had no idea that it was going to be the biggest billboard ever in the world, and that it was going to mm. make people know about my business. I didn't know the recognition I would get from being on the 630 freeway. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know. I thought that people would just come and, you know, just drop off tons of cash, you know, at the front door every, every day. But <laughs> Isn't an entrepreneur just, an eternal yes, optimist forever? Yes. I think that has got to be in our moral fiber that we are the eternal optimist. Right. Right. Well, so the thing I learned is that you do have to be an optimist, but you have to, to temper that with the realities that people have to find you. Um, they have to um, seek you out. You have to be consistent. You have to find something that is unique. You have to constantly market. And you were saying persistence, patience, and uh, uh, perseverance. perseverance. Mm-hmm. All of those things is something that you know you think you understand, you know, in a cocktail party or something. But when you start, you know, being responsible for the in and out of your cash flow, you, those things really hit home. 
And so, you know, it's expensive to run a business. Oh. And, and you don't know that when you get started. So when you, you start a business. You never do your business plan exactly. exactly as, right. Did you do a business plan? I did. And, and if I was to recommend um, somebody starting any small business, whether it's a gallery, whether it's just becoming an artist or not, I would, I would write a business plan and I would try to follow it as best you could. But then I would also temper a lot of creativity and flexibility into that because a lot of times it doesn't go the way you originally had planned it. So how much miscellaneous, did you add a little 10% to expenses that said these are the things I didn't think of? When you did your business plan, did you go ten percent miscellaneous expenses? You know, I, I tried to, but there's always things that you just don't foresee. You yeah. know, I mean, you don't you don't know what signage is going to cost until you try to put one up. You know, you don't know what your advertising really is going to take until you start doing. You know, paying for advertising. You don't know. You should. You were in that business. Well, I know it. I know it. But <laughs> if anybody you know, should know, you should know. Right. But, <laughs> But, you know, back then, I just pulled out a rate card and ran through it and yeah. worked through it and crunched the numbers and all that kind of stuff. And, and that know. was a long time ago. Yes, it was. It was. But, you know, there's, there's a certain expenses that you just don't know you're going to have until you're in that position. So I've known you forever, mm-hmm. feels like. And I had no idea. I feel like a terrible friend. I had no <laughs> idea that you had done so much. I mean, I think well, I said I didn't know beginning. you had done so much either, Carrie. So I guess we're both <laughs> terrible friends. I know, right? So I think at the beginning of the show, I talked about that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give one last shout out of our phone number, and then we're going to wind it up, and I want to talk about some of your awards. Okay. Again, you're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. I'm my guest, Matt McLeod from McLeod's Fine Arts Gallery on Main Street in downtown Little Rock. This is KABF 88.3. If you've got questions or comments that you'd like to ask Matt or me, call us at 501 433 zero zero eight eight or you can email questions at upyourbusiness.org yeah you've won some awards dude <laughs> hey, you got two pa- your resume up oh, before i get list them we've got a caller you're on the air caller uh yeah i was just uh calling uh, matt mcleod uh i think he's a wonderful artist in it did you nice. used to live out on burlingame Carrie? No. no. Oh, Who, Carrie, Carrie or, or Matt? Yeah, Carrie. Me? Burlingame? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think I... Oh, oh, no, 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 but I did have some property out there a long, long time ago that was under my name. Well, I, I, uh, we did a remodel. That's how I got to know Matt's work. Is, uh, the homeowner had a, a picture that she just got, and they were uh, h- hanging it on the wall there, and I, I saw it, and it was just... Uh, isn't that it nice? Grabbed me. It, it grabbed me, the, the, his color scheme, and it was just a real pretty picture. And I, I found out who it was, so uh, I've been a big fan of his ever since. Oh, wow. Thanks a lot. You need Appreciate to come that. down to his gallery. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I know it. I, I don't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just beautiful. I, I mean, I think he does what an artist is supposed to do, because it sure talks to me. I can get in his world by looking at it, and I can oh, look cool. at it for a while. All right. That's a payoff. It's, a, it's just real pleasing. I just wanted to say something because uh, it would really be a shame if you didn't uh, take a leap of faith. Oh, I'm glad you did. More. Yeah, thank oh, you. That was a great that, call. I, I just wanted to say that's all I wanted to say. All right, thanks thank for you. calling. Thanks that for was calling. a great yeah, call. That. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. A little vote of confidence that we were talking about, how you have to put yourself out there and you well, never you really know. Do. And then you find people who really, it resonates with them. And Boy, so isn't that a that's, that's feedback. Yeah. That was worth coming today just to get that phone call. <laughs> Absolutely. So I bet, your, I bet the painting he saw was full of orange and purple. I'm sure. I use that a lot. I know. Yeah, sort of a triad with orange, purple, and green. I know. I love that. I really do love that. So let's talk about some of your recognitions. You were best in show at, I'm, I'll probably say this wrong. How do you say that? Akanza Art Festival? Mm-hmm. Is that how you say it? Akanza, right. Akanza Art mm-hmm. Festival. You were best in show. Mm-hmm. You're the featured artist at Thea Foundation. Mm-hmm. You're the featured artist at Music Fest in El Dorado. You were the featured artist at River Fest. You were on the calendar of the Arkansas Governor's Mansion. Mm-hmm. You were in the Delta Exhibit mm-hmm. uh, twice. Governor's right. Mansion calendar twice, mm-hmm. and you were there one time painting at the Governor's Mansion when I was there for our house. Mm-hmm. That's right. And I was bidding on it, and my husband Grady was like, "So glad when I lost that because <laughs> it was going through the roof." <laughs> I hope to have um, Georgia from our house on in a few weeks to talk about running. Um, oh, she's great. Yeah. Ain't she great? Yeah. 
So we're about to finish it up here. We've got a few more minutes. Anything yeah. you want to tell uh, starving artists out there? Well, you know, uh, thanks for mentioning my accomplishments, and, you know, that's just part of it. And I think, you know, those come from just hanging in there, perseverance, and working at it, persistence. And that's the thing I would say, is it isn't going to happen overnight. And, is your dad um, still involved with you? He's yes, still calm? he really is. I looked for him last Very night. Very supportive. He well, is. He couldn't make it last night, but... They're, they're tremendously supportive. And, and, you know, you need to appreciate your support group. Now, I will say that we're on 108 West 6th Street, which is just west of Main and 6th. You can find Oh, so it's not, so it's not, it's not really exactly the corner. Main. It's just down the street at, at 108 well, West barely 6th. down the street. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I felt like it's I was going spot. in the corner. Yeah, it's right. So it's really, it's really not Main Street. When I say it's on Main Street, it's really on 6th Street. Well, that's the best way to find it, 6th uh, and Main. But, 6th and but Main. it's actually but, on 6th. But on the address, sixth. The address yeah, 108 is 6th Street. Sixth. And then they can go to, what's your web address? So my web address is www.mattmcleod.com. And that's uh, M-C-L-E-O-D. Yeah, I didn't know that's how you spelled your name either. Right. Yeah. It sounds like C L O U D Cloud. Right. But it's McCloud. We're that- eventually going to change that to MattMcCloudGallery.com, but right now it's MattMcCloud.com. What are your hours, or do you keep hours? We keep uh, hours from ten to six, Tuesday through Friday, and Saturday ten to four. Like a real store. It's a real store. Wow. That's, I know that's shocking your system. It is a shock to the system. But, you know, I still get to paint and I have fun. And do you paint down there? I do. I like to sit up in the window and, and people walk by. And, oh, right. And check it out and come in and engage in conversation. And it's just really, a, I try to invite people in as much as I can. You know, that's the, the beauty of being downtown. Uh, it's just vital and stuff going on all the time. It's really cool. you know. Last so. night, there was somebody shooting uh, still photography in the alley mm-hmm. at 7 o'clock at night mm-hmm. with special lighting. Mm-hmm. The rep was go. Everybody was going into the rep. You had your show. Mm-hmm. There was a man panhandling, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I knew him. I recognized sure. him. Sure. Um, but it was really, uh, Samantha's was packed yeah, down was the packed. street. Went down there after. Yeah, yeah, it was after. packed. I was like, this is really got a great It's a great feel. vibe to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really a lot of fun. You know, Little Rock is kind of coming back in the downtown area, and it's just becoming a lot of fun to be down there. And, and I'm glad to see more and more people coming down there. You know, it's just, it's, it's fun and exciting. And, you know, the thing is that I was attracted to it is anytime you have arts culture in there, it's going to be fun, funky, weird, and just really a lot of a fun place to be. And that's what's happening. I'm glad to be a part of it. Okay. So I need to thank our guest today because... Uh, starting a business is like birthing a baby. It is. <laughs> so here's your cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm a proud parent. <laughs> You're a proud parent. That came from Colonial Fine Wines and I guess Humidor. They got a big Humidor room, oh, room in the back. Yeah, you'll yeah. enjoy that. I smoked one the other day. Oh, really? I'd like to see that. Uh huh. Me and Monica. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> well, thank you. I'll enjoy this. Thank you, Matt McLeod from McLeod's Fine Arts Gallery. I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you, Carrie. And uh, I appreciate you having me on the show. And it's been a lot of fun. No problem. Thanks for coming to my third show. Oh, what a, what a pleasure. And please come see me at the gallery and everybody yeah, out there. You have to come back and help audience. us guide people. Maybe next year you have to come back and repeat this. I'd love Because I think you have a lot of great information for people. Sure. I'd love my it. guest next week is Al Hodge from Arkansas Capital. And Laura Fine from the Small Business Development Center at UALR. We're going to talk really specifics about business plans and balance sheets. Some people don't know the difference between those two. Not Matt, because he went to school for business. (laughs) But a lot of people don't know those two and don't know how important it is to write out a business plan. Even if you're not asking for money, it helps you to go through the process of seeing if your idea is good enough to work. Mm -hmm. You know, it Every time you start off, you're kind of shocked, I think. at You're like, oh, I thought that was such a better idea. And then when you do the expenses, you're kind of like, oh, wow. And after that, I have, I've got a sitting guest, R.J. Martino from I Probably Sitting In, and he's got a surprise guest, so that'll be a surprise. And then after that, I believe, is French Hill, our congressman. He's going to, he owns he own small businesses. He's going to talk about owning a small business, and we might ask him some political questions, too. Sounds so great. to our listeners, I hope you've learned something today that will help you up your business. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next week on KABF Radio every Friday at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Until then, be brave and keep it up. 
You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to flagandbanner.com and click on Radio Show. Like us on Facebook or subscribe to her weekly podcast wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. Underwriting opportunities available upon request. Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.